Hello and welcome to the sixth part in the DIY Arduino Lithium Ion Battery Management System project. In this part I'm just adding a current sensor so we can monitor how much current goes into the batteries and also we can add uh, overcurrent protection as well. It's mostly done already. I've got the power supply set up here so it just shorts through the sensor. If I turn that on we should get about 12 amps going through our uh, ACS 712 board and that is showing up down here, 11.7 is what it's reading. So I need to get this wired in with this MOSFET over here so we can actually measure the amount of current that's going into the batteries as we charge them. And I need to add in the code for doing uh, overcurrent protection. All right, so I have implemented into the code overcurrent protection. So it's set at an amp and a half. You see right now it's showing that we're pushing half an amp through it, which we're really not. It's a bit of an offset. Like I've said uh, quite a few times before with this project, one of my biggest issues is the uh, ground voltage potential does not stay the same throughout the entire breadboard so uh, as that ground voltage varies from me bumping wires the uh, the offset on this varies quite a bit so if i enable the output we've got 1.34 amps i'm just going to nudge that up and it eventually goes into oscillation once you start hitting over one and a half as this thing measures and i should be able to back the current down until it starts to uh, not be over 1.5 amps again. So there you go, 1.4, and now it's not uh, in that oscillation phase. Now it probably does need to have something where it at least delays that oscillation so it's not going quite that fast. Ideally, it'd probably have a shutoff that would require a user intervention to uh, turn it back on after that sort of uh, an event happens. Now here is a bit of a problem that I have discovered with this thing. If we turn our set supply voltage up to something like 15 volts or more, which would be you know a reasonable thing if you had something like a solar panel hooked up to it, when you use an in-channel MOSFET like this, you have an issue because the MOSFET is ground referenced. And this power supply is not really ground referenced with the rest of the circuit. Uh, at least when it's turned off. When it's turned on, it is ground reference with the rest of the circuit, but when the power supply, or when the, sorry, when the MOSFET is turned off, power supply is not ground referenced. So what you end up having is a voltage between the source pin and the gate pin, and that voltage actually allows current to flow. And you'll see that over here. When the MOSFET's turned on, we got about 2.6 amps, which is the current limit, and when the MOSFET's off, we're actually still letting about 1.2 amps in. So what I think I'm going to have to do is uh, remove this MOSFET and just uh, switch to the positive side, use a P-channel FET instead of an in-channel FET. And so that's something I'm going to have to change later. Um, and of course, that thing gets really hot when you're only letting uh, half the current go through it. But of course it does work okay if your voltage is set low enough. So if I set this down to 14 volts and it shuts off, it should actually turn it off. Yep, there you go, zero amps. So uh, I should have done some more testing on that before and I should have thought it through. Yeah, that's just kind of how these things go. Uh, you discover problems and you have to fix them. Especially if you don't completely think through the uh, original plan so you don't have problems. but. Uh, Anyway, definitely something that I can fix. I need to get a hold of some uh, P-channel MOSFETs. The main reason I used an in-channel MOSFET in the first place is because I don't have any P-channel MOSFETs. Uh, I could also probably get the in-channel MOSFET to drive the high side if I wanted to really mess with some different circuitry, but uh, anyway, something for another video. If you like the video, click on the like button. If you like the idea, click the subscribe button so you'll see the videos as they come out of this project. And if you want some smaller updates and things like that on this project or my other projects, you can go follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description. That's it for now, guys. Bye.